In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly install mods onto your new modded Minecraft server. If you don't already have a modded Minecraft server ready to go, check the description and there's a link in there for our video all about how to set up your own Forge server. So once you've done that, come back to this video and we'll get you set up with some mods. So first things first, we need to find some mods to actually install onto our server. So I'm on the Curse Forge website because that is a pretty good place to find Minecraft mods. And what you can do is scroll down and you can see here that we have a link for mods. So let's click on that. And it's going to list a bunch of relevant mods for us. Now, the, obviously, these are very popular mods here. What we can do is sort if we want to, to try and find some different mods. But also what we can do is search specifically for mods if we already know what we want to run on our server. So let's take a look at one of these mods. Let's look at just enough items. So just enough items is a very popular mod. Uh, basically, every single mod pack uses this mod and it's kind of a necessity. And let's take a look at the details and specifically what we're looking at here is the game versions and the mod loaders. Now, if you followed my previous video on setting up the Minecraft server, you'll know that we're running a Forge server. The steps I'm going to show you also work for NeoForge and it's quite similar, honestly, to do it for Fabric as well. So obviously, this is still useful information, but in this case, specifically, I'm looking at doing it on Forge. So because I know that, let's click on Forge here in the mod loaders area. And this is now just going to show me versions of this mod specifically that run on a Forge Minecraft server. So the top one here is for version 1.21.1. .1. That's the version that I'm running on my server. So I know that this is what I need. So let's go ahead and download this file. Once this file is downloaded, what we're then going to do is just move it into a folder so that we know where that mod is on our computer. So there you can see the file is downloaded and let's actually take that file Let's move it into a folder so that we know where it is. Let's put it here. Now, if you're just downloading a few individual mods, what I'd recommend you do is go ahead, go into CurseForge, find all of the mods that you want to install onto your server, put them all into a file space like this. And then once you've collected all of the mods that you want to run on your Minecraft server, we then need to get them onto our server. Now, obviously in my previous video, what I showed was setting up the server on Ubuntu. Um, even if you're not running the server on Ubuntu, even if you're running the server locally on your own PC, the folder structure I'm going to show you is basically exactly the same. So these steps still work. So, so even if it's not exactly what you were looking for, don't worry, this video is still helpful for you. So stick with it. So what we're going to do is access our remote server so that we can see the file space for our server. Now, because we're going to be moving a lot of individual files around on a remote server, probably the easiest way to do this is to use an FTP client like FileZilla. So what I'm going to do is open FileZilla here because I already had it installed. And if you don't already have FileZilla installed, what you can do is just search for it on Google. And there you go. It's the free. It's a, it's a completely free program. You can just download the client right there. And once you've done that, you'll end up with this interface. So it's the exact interface that I'm using. So let's open FileZilla. And what we want to do is log into our remote server with FileZilla so that we can then start accessing the file space. So what I need to do is get the server access details so that I can actually log into FileZilla. So let's just pull those details up now. So I just need the IP address for FileZilla because that's going to go into the host section. And then I'm just going to type in my user that I set up to actually manage the modded Minecraft server, which is modded MC admin, and then the password for that user. And because I haven't actually set up any FTP specific details for this server, I'm going to access this server via port 22, which means I'm going to access it via SFTP. Basically, if you don't know what that means, don't worry. Um, if you haven't set up an FTP user for your Linux server, then just go ahead and use port 22. And there we go. We're now logged into our remote server using FileZilla via SFTP. So you can see here that we have our folder structure from our server right here. That's because that is representing what is actually on our server. If I go into my SSH client, and if I was to go to my home space and then type in ls for list, then you'll see there that we have all of these same files and folders all listed. So it's exactly what is on our server. And the reason why we're using FileZilla rather than the SSH client to do this is because with FileZilla, we can literally drag and drop files and rename them really easily as if we're using Windows Explorer. So it's a much easier way of doing it. So let's open up our mods directory. And you can see that we don't have anything in there at the moment. Let's go to the space where we actually installed or downloaded our mods on our PC. And all we have to do is just drag them into that white space right there. 
and that's now uploaded the mod to our server. If you're hosting locally, then you obviously don't need to upload anything like that. You just need to find that mods folder in your Forge server once it's installed and drag the mod into that folder. So if you have any other mods, then drag them up into the server. And then what we can then do is go into our terminal and let's actually run our server. So let's do dot slash run pop sh. So that's now launching our server, obviously using the Java arguments to set the RAM and everything like that. So we're just going to let that run. And what we're then going to do actually is open up Minecraft. Nope, I don't want default Minecraft because we want modded Minecraft. So let's, let's open up my local copy of CurseForge. You can see there in the background that server is now up and running. So that means it's working. So obviously we've set up the server and that's now running with a mod. Um, in order to actually access that server, we now need to make sure that we have a profile that uses the same version of Minecraft and has that mod installed. So if you're not using a pre-existing profile, what you can do is create a profile. And let's just call this JEI because that's the only mod I've got installed in this case. Select the Minecraft version of the server that you're trying to join, which is 121.1. It is a Forge server. So we want to make sure that that is ticked. And let's make sure that we're on the latest version of Forge as well. So, okay, so here's our modded Minecraft user that we're going to be running locally in order to join our modded Minecraft server. Now, what we could do is go to add content and find the mods that we then want to run locally so that we can join our server. But another way of doing this, and probably an easy way of doing this actually, is go to the three dots and go to open folder. This is showing you now the local uh, Minecraft instance with all the folders. It looks obviously quite similar to our server. Uh, but what we want to do is go into the mod section. And what we could do uh, quite easily, actually, is if we go to where we actually put our mods that we downloaded for our server, open that space, and then let's just drag the mod across. And the reason for doing it this way is because then we know for sure that we're using the exact same version of the mod, both locally and on our server, which means we're not going to run into the issue of accidentally downloading the wrong version of the mod. So do that for all of the mods that you've installed. And then in CurseForge, you can see that it's already updated with that new mod, and that's the version that's shown that's installed. So let's go ahead and try and play Minecraft. So that's now opening our... So that's now opening Minecraft. It's going to come up. There we go. It's got the forge loading splash screen. So it's obviously we know we're running modded Minecraft here. And that's definitely a different interface. And obviously you can see there the game dashboard is showing all of the things it's doing to get Minecraft open. So let's full screen that. Let's go into multiplayer. Let's proceed. And you can see that I actually already added the server. If I wanted to add the server again, let's just delete that. Uh, if I add server, and what we want to do is just grab our server IP address paste that in and then let's do colon 25565 for the port press done and you can see there it's showing the server as being joinable and it's also telling us that our version of minecraft and the model running matches the server so if i hit play and we're on our minecraft server and just to make sure the mod is working let's press e and as soon as this stuff disappears, you'll see here on the right hand side, this is the just enough items interface, which means that mod is working. We're on a multiplayer server and the mods are running. So that's how you go ahead and install individual mods onto your Minecraft server. And just to round it all off once you've tested and everything's working and you know that the server and the mod pack itself is working properly, what you can do then is actually share this profile with your friends to get them to join your server as well. And you can see here, you can either export as a zip files and then upload to CurseForge as your very own mod pack, or if you're just sharing amongst a small group of friends, you can send a seven day code just to very quickly import all the mods in CurseForge. Now in the next video, I'm gonna show you how you would install a full mod pack to your server. So stay tuned.